When I think of the beauty of thy peace, I think of one person who embodies that idea. Quiet, soft-spoken, but firmly grounded in truth. No nonsense. Absolutely fixed with her eyes on spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, please help me welcome our staff minister to deliver the message this morning. Our beautiful, quiet, peaceful, poised, and powerful Reverend Anne Shand. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for sharing your consciousness with me this morning. And before I start, Vance, welcome home, Anna. I know you're on your pilot project this time. It's the first time in Jamaica. She's going to teach girls how to program. So she's starting this project, and we wish you well and complete success. And our boys who saw Arun Gandhi yesterday are here with us this morning. Kemar, Devon, you had a good time yesterday? Yes, or um, the fifth grandson of Mahatma Gandhi. Our boys got to meet him, yes, meet him yesterday. So we are pleased that we were invited to that youth summit in Montego Bay. We're going places, don't yeah. On a sad note, though, um, Mrs. Chisholm lost her husband. He made his trans his journey onto his next assignment Friday night. I don't know. It's difficult to say what we want to say, don't. So we just smile. So when you see her, or if you call her today, Paul or Sophia or Safia, any one of the family, just, you know, just remember to just hold a high watch for them in support and love, right? I know it's difficult, but please try, all right? Okay. So let us get back to our message this morning. And I welcome those joining us on the World Wide Web. August is our designated month when we consider freedom as our two major holidays, emancipation and independence, shift our attention to the significance of freedom, freedom in our lives. Last week's sharing from Dr. Sonia Davidson started in the right direction. Whatever matters feels good. The importance of paying attention to our feelings as we intend to live life more abundant. Abraham, that non-physical intelligence through Esther Hicks stated, and I quote, when you think a thought that rings true with who you really are, you feel harmony coursing through your physical body. Joy, love, and a sense of freedom are examples of that alignment, end of quote. A sense of freedom. What does freedom mean to you? When was the last time, in a rare moment, you flung off the shoes of your feet, flinging your hands in the air and shouted with untrammeled joy? A ebullient, exhilarating, jubilant feeling surged through you from head to toe or in a moment of connection with something or someone you loved, almost uncontrollable joy flew through every circuit of your body temple, or in a moment of understanding of something that has bothered you for years and just came through in an aha moment, or in a sense of high spiritedness, a deep silence filled your being, and no words were enough to describe the moment. That's a touch of freedom. So what does freedom mean to you? What does it feel like? What does it look like? So let us look at the word freedom in the words of Jack Holland. 
Studying the word freedom, free domini, we understand that which the subconscious has long since known to be the truth. Free domini, free God within. Herein, the, herein lies the truth of our salvation. We are spiritual beings last, first, last, and always. And our freedom rests not in external manifestations, but in an inner awareness of what we are and what we are a part of. Our Declaration of Principles reminds us we believe in our own soul, our own spirit, our own destiny, for we understand that the life of man is God. Let us personalize that together. I believe in my own soul, my own spirit, my own destiny, for I understand that the life of man is God. You're not convincing me. You don't believe that? Come on, come, 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 come. Because it is, if it's one truth you have to learn, it is that one. I believe, again, I believe in my own soul, my own spirit, my own destiny, for I understand that the life of man is God. You are in control. Nobody else. That is what freedom is. Joel Goldsmith reminds us from one of his books, freedom is being. Freedom is life living itself. Freedom is joy and peace. It is not blind obedience to man-made laws. And it is certainly not licensed to do as you please without consequences. Freedom is the intrinsic joy of living. The joy of life moving upon itself to create anew through each one of us. It is a song of the soul. So we must truly know then that we are expressions of God and thereby express authentically through the communion of mind, body, and spirit as individualized expressions of that living spirit almighty. Sri Aurobindo, the great Hindu philosopher, states, and I quote, the liberated individual who has realized the self and spirit within him, who has entered into the cosmic consciousness acts by the light and energy of the power within him, working through his human instruments. There is a total liberation of soul, mind, heart, and action, a casting of them all into the sense of the cosmic self and the divine reality, end of quote. Simply, it means to me that each one of us, mind, body, and spirit, when you awaken to that spiritual magnificence within, free God within, there is such a refinement of your individual consciousness that it takes place on every level at the cosmic reality. So when you are uplifted, the whole world benefits. So. What does freedom mean to each one of us as we release that splendor from within? How do we sing that song of freedom in every avenue of expression? Friends, as we think about this question concerning what freedom means to each one of us, as we seek to live life more abundant, to every day rise in ebullient joy, fully motivated by happiness, contentment, a sense of fulfillment, that the infinite is expressing in our life and affairs, we want to move away from an existence where, to some extent, external forces are sometimes triggered to pain and suffering. Sometimes coffee, sometimes tea, sometimes we're happy today, tomorrow you're sad. We want to move away from that. We want to move away from where you just react to what you see, you touch, you taste, what you hear. Move away from just attracting just plain all attracting the good that we see. We want to move to a life where there is no evidence of separation from your good. We experience our oneness with God at all times. We move from God expresses in through as me, but jubilantly we can say, I am one with God. You deepen your sense of awareness. You are conscious in every moment. That's what we're talking about. Robert Bitzer 
one of our new thought, I think he was Reverend's teacher also, he said this, which is so, it just hit the nail on the head. This transcendent power and present, presence, it flows through our beings. The finite gives way to the infinite. Human truly becomes divine. Man has merged with the infinite one, and henceforth we function from that awareness. We are conscious of the life of man is God. Reverend Elmer told of an incident at Alderman Morgan's Thanksgiving service, and I want to repeat this simple story. It concerns, I don't know if the child has grown up in this church, since I don't know who it is, but I saw it in our papers and I found it quite funny. A mommy and daughter who attended this church went to the supermarket, completed the shopping, went out to the car park to store the groceries in the luggage compartment, and then drive home. Mommy and daughter went to the front of the car. Mommy placed key into the ignition. No answering response. No engine turning over. After a few tries, still nothing. Mommy called for assistance to take them home. All this while, child of our Sunday school was silent. She then quietly stated, Mommy, Uncle Morgie says before we do anything, we must talk to God. Did you talk to God? <laughs> well, they both talked to God. Tried the ignition again, car started, and they went about their business. Simple story. But it is true though. Uncle Morgie used to tell them the first thing you do anytime, anywhere, is to talk to God. So our Sunday school children epitomize that. It's a simple story about how we live. Do we talk to God first and allow the splendor of God's presence to permeate our beings, guiding us to initiate the right decisions for every single event, no matter how trite they are? It is said by Bruce Lipton of Biology of Belief fame, so what is the reason as to why our lives don't match our conscious wishes and desires? According to neuroscientists, we only use our conscious mind about 5% of the time in control in our lives. 5%? Boy. So therefore, most of our decisions, actions, emotions, and behavior are derived from the programs in the subconscious mind. In other words, we live from the stored mental patterns that we have collected from before birth, after birth, up until now. Race beliefs, other people's opinions, lives, we react rather than mindfully moving from on the utilization of our conscious mind. He goes on to say that, what would life be if we would keep our conscious minds present in a state of mindfulness without defaulting to subconscious programs. One of the most important points to make is that limiting subconscious programs are not fixed, interchangeable behaviors. We have the ability to rewrite disempowering beliefs, freedom from limiting situations that no longer serve us, and in the process take control of our lives. Just imagine if your subconscious mind was programmed with the same behaviors held in the conscious mind. Now we are being self-aware. We would be able to experience a perpetual heaven for as long as we live, which is eternal. Sounds familiar? Creative process in the individual mind by Trod. Did they know more? You remember that one, Andrea? That is exactly what he's saying. When the subconscious mind and the conscious mind are acting together, and you are fully conscious even when you leave this plane of existence, you direct, you direct. So how do we liberate ourselves? Free domina, free God within, consciously living from the awareness of infinite mind, infinite God here and now. One way of changing those default programs is by, as Bruce Lipton states, the primary mechanism to acquire new habits in the subconscious mind after six, is age six, is through the use of repetitive behaviors. Hence the need for practice. 
That is why we tell you day in, day out, do your affirmations, do your, um, your prayer work, practice, practice. Simply by creating new neural networks, by repeating affirmations, and by daily consistently engaging in spiritual practices to stabilize and cement the new neural pathway for the new thought, idea, habit, behavior, and experience that you are going to embrace or going forward to. Two of the most effective tools we have or have been taught are through spiritual mind treatment and visioning. In analyzing the methodology for visioning, it is akin to a seven-step spiritual mind treatment. But let us remind ourselves first, as in the words of Wordsworth, and I quote, but trailing clouds of glory we come from God, who is our home, end of quote. Our natural blueprint is that we are already individual manifestations of God. So with affirmative prayer, in the words of our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, a spiritual mind treatment to be effective must be spoken from a consciousness which knows itself to be the presence, the power, and the activity of God. And for visioning, from the words of Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, when we do visioning, we become more aware that we are spiritual beings, made in the likeness of God, not separate from God, and that all the divine ideas God has within us already. So we know what we want to know wherever, whenever we want, because it's already in our... Ah, all right. So here we are, choosing a tool that will release the splendor of God within us to experience complete freedom, which is our natural birthright. We can use this amazing tool to shape our life's journey and to remind ourselves of the vision of our spiritual community and to understand our participation in this process, which is one of the foundation steps our TMI group, the Thriving Ministry Initiative, is all about to understand God's highest idea for our community and the role each one of us has to play in the accomplishment of its mission and vision, which you've sung about already. The seven-step process I have summarized following is from Dr. Beckwith's book, Life Visioning. Step one, ask that we become quiet, meditating to center ourselves, sensitizing our awareness and activating our intuitive faculty, which is really saying simply centering ourselves in God. He says, feel deeply into your heart and open to its atmosphere of unconditional love. So when you're beginning that vision in session with meditation, it is the doorway into an intimate at oneness with source and its intuitive whispers in your secret soul sounds the same thing that we do when we start our mind treatment in the silence of our being, that secret place of the Most High. So what he's saying is that for that step, just sit quietly, go within that heart space, find that sacred space of unconditional love that you are already, and just stay there. And it leads to our second step, which is once you are in that receptive, fertile space, you are training our consciousness to become receptive to the feeling tone of deep listening with the inner ear and seeing with the inner eye of intuition. Ultimately, he says that the revelation of the vision that is seeking to emerge through you will come in a form that you will understand, whether it is a tone of slight feeling, an image, a symbol, or an insight, or maybe a sound, or you are led to read something. Step three, he says, we mentally place questions now to that inner wisdom that is within. And the first question is, what is spirit's highest vision for my life of freedom, happiness, and joy? The Latter phrase, um, words are my phrases. The, the question is actually to find out what is spirit's highest vision for whatever is happening to you or whatever 
you want, what project you want to go into, about a relationship, your business, whatever it is, no matter how small it is. What is Spirit's highest vision for me today? What I want, what is it that I am to wear? You know, these ladies that have three closets and can't find anything, you can do just like how Reverend Elman does. Stand up in front and say, Father, what are we going to wear today? That is the first question, and it will come. Believe me, it will come. She proved it day in, day out. She does not go in and pick anything. She is told what to take, take out. So the first question is, what is spirit's highest vision for my life of freedom, happiness, and joy? Or what seeks to emerge from this situation or event for my highest good? Or it can be, what is the highest vision for this project, this relationship, my business, whatever it is, ask the question. And listen with alertness, in reverence, because your inner ear is now activated to listen to that still small voice. Sometimes you can get a sense from your solar plexus. Some people feel by the gut, that space down there. But pay attention. It, pay attention, as he says it's so cute as though the greatest mystery of the universe will be whispered to you. So in reverence and awe with certainty and intention to hear. If you hear anything, record it. If not, go back into the silence. The next question to pose is, what must I become in order to manifest this vision, this project, this experience of continual happiness and joy and freedom, this relationship for my highest good, what must I become? The posing of this question signifies our intention and commitment to our own evolutionary progress. There is willingness to take action. The truth is we already know intrinsically what we must become to live our vision, to let the presence of God flow through us. The question though, what qualities must I cultivate, what must I become, means no judgment, but an increased awareness of who we are, ready to initiate what it takes to get on track with our blueprint. It is a question of I am the awareness of infinite mind, the big self in capitals. If you are led to write something, write it. Or Draw something, whatever it is. If not, go back into that silence, that sacred space. The next question is, what must I release to manifest the vision of spirit's highest idea for my life? What must I release in order to get ready for this vision that is seeking to emerge from me? To get ready for this relationship that I am ready for? For this project that I am about to be part of? What must I release? So we can now let go of the limiting thoughts, feelings, behavior, habits, convictions, experience, unforgiveness. So we can now move forward on our journey of living from our highest potential. God in action by means of me. So if you are led, right, if not. Right. Step six, you go back into the silence. The next question is what talents, gifts, skills, and qualities do I possess that will serve this vision of life more abundant, of happiness, of joy, this project, this relationship? What talents and gifts, skills, and qualities that I have within me? That's what that question is asking. This step is all about moving, shifting consciousness to a state of being and having rather than seeking to get something. The mind is now at the platform of, I have the consciousness of what is emerging. What is it that I want? What is it that I'm going towards? This step reminds us of the assets, the qualities, the skills that we have temporarily forgotten, that we have and are sitting on. You know, some people can cook and they forget until they are put in a particular circumstance and then cordon de blue or whatever it is is produced. You have people like that, you know, believe it or not. You have qualities, you have assets that you forget about temporarily in the moment. And that question is to 
just bring you up to a step of, of awareness to look at what is it that you have around you that you can start with. You're not coming from a position of minus, no, you know, you're coming from a position of plus. I have it. You understand what he's saying? You're shifting to having, being, being aware of, right? This step enables the consciousness to expand. It gives energy, respect, self-love, the realization that you are sufficient, you are enough, the possi possibilities that you have, that you want to contribute to your spiritual community, to your vision, to your relationship, what is it that you have? And it means also to stir up the gifts of God within us, mental pattern. Some people have gifts that is sitting on. This is to get you, to allow it to emerge. Write down, if not, go back into step seven. Now, this step is, is really the culmination. It says, this step comes from the language of the heart. Here we go back into the silence with a yes, yes, yes to the vision. Yes to what has emerged with an attitude of thanksgiving, with full expectation, anticipation that the splendor that is within you is released. It is an affirmative step. It is a step that is saying that I am willing to achieve, to be, to do, to have in a grateful, appreciative set, mental set. When um, Sanjo read um, that piece from the Science of Mind about Thanksgiving and it gave you ideas of what you to say Thanksgiving for, this is what it is saying. When you're in that attitude of gratitude, your mind opens. You are softer. You are receptive because you are willing to say thanks even for the very feet that you're putting your foot on. Even if it's something, as I said before, it's sometimes it's somebody, you feel that it's somebody who is in your way. It is that time to find even something to say, th to be thankful about that person. Even how they dress, anything, just to move you to that step of being affirmative, saying yes to your vision in a mode of thanksgiving. It is a wonderful tool, this visioning, because it gives us an awareness of who we are, the state of oneness which we function from, and it awakens us to that spiritual magnificence that is within us. Suppose you don't want to go through all those questions you can't remember, but something happens to you on the spot. Remember that you are seeking to be conscious. You can just simply say to yourself, I am the awareness of what is seeking to be emerged. You understand how I've just put everything together? Mm -hmm. I am the awareness of this new relationship. I am the awareness of what is seeking to be emerged from this event. I am the awareness of this new project, this new way of life, being free, happiness, joy. I am the awareness. Because what you have said is that, yes, I am it, and I say yes to it. That's what that is saying. I'm it, and I'm saying yes to it. That is, and with thanksgiving. So as we think of our mission here, to touch, to heal, to bless, to liberate, all of that is part of who we are, and that is the reason why we are all together in this sacred space, this beautiful space called the Temple of Light. And I'm most reminded that vision in works. It was started by Dr. Michael Beckwith. He was also, he came from, he was taught by Holmes Institute. He was a minister brought up in Science of Mind. And he didn't have a church. And, well, he wasn't fussy about having a church anyway, to tell you the truth. But something led him to somewhere. And then the thought came that, yes, I must start a community. And the tool of visioning came to him by sitting in the silence. So Dr. Beth will use this tool in 1986 to start a small church. And in 2012, he has 10,000 people in a building that they own and are fully, it was fully paid for through vision. He visioned every single step, even when they ran out of money and they had to leave this hotel, they had to make up their mind and say, okay, we had bought a piece of property, we have to put something on it. The building contractors were taking time to give them permits to build. 
But him say no, is either a lockdown this one and embrace the vision. And they had two flyers. This is how you know spirit is just in the center. Two flyers, one to say is all right, next week we're going to have church at the rented hotel. Or next week, this church is, this, that is closed and we are going to be in our new building. It was November actually. And it stopped in September. And spirits down in that vision and said, mm -mm, just one flyer, the one in November. And everything, I don't know how spirit did it, pull everything, permit, contractor, a gentleman, the contractor gave his time free. They got this free. Everything just went into place and they went into their building the November through visioning. And now they have more than 10,000 congregants. Friends, we have this tool. It, is, it, it has worked for us in this church because as ministers, we are taught by Reverend Elma to vision. And some people do vision every event in their lives. It works like a dream. I am not giving you anything that doesn't work. It works, it works, it works. You have to work it though. Because we are the awareness of that infinite mind that is God. We have to free that presence of God within. That's what freedom is all about, you know. This unrestricted, un liberated, ex um, ebullient, exhilarating feeling. Reverend, Elma, um, Reverend Sona can tell you, because she lived from that. You know, she's always bubbling. Ask her about it. That is what freedom is all about. So as our declaration of principles tell us, we believe in the ultimate goal of life to be a complete freedom or emancipation from all discord of every nature, and that this goal is sure to be attained by all. Not some, by all. So as today, friends, as we continue to awaken to our spiritual magnificence, let us do the work. Let us practice, practice, practice our vision of freedom, happiness, and joy. Freedom is a must, I say. Namaste.